Hey guys, D Mike here. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays with Illusion of Gaia. Last time we escaped Edward's prison, we were able to make our way to the magical Etori village with Lily's help. And now, after meeting the Moon Tribe, we've decided to go and use the mystical statues on our way to the Incan ruins. If you like mystical statues, ink and ruins, magical villages, and escaping prisons, consider liking this video, commenting, and subscribing. So, there we go, on our way. Hopefully you're enjoying this game. We're going to be doing most of, part of, some of, a dungeon today. The Inca ruins, Inken ruins, whatever, are, um... It's a dungeon, so just to give you a heads up, prepare yourselves. Just in case you're wondering, this is the entrance to the ruins. Thank you, game. So Lily's gonna tell us all about some lore that the Incan legend is that the tribe from long ago wanted to leave their native land and find a new world. So they packed up all their goodies, built a secret ship, Filled it with artifacts, but there's no record of that ship departing in any way. Is the ship real? Is it a myth? It's real. Then, uh, yeah, I guess it's our job to find out. Now, one of the things that I think is kind of neat is the set design of these little areas before you go into dungeons. They're pretty good. The scenery kind of reminds me of when I traveled to the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Saw some Mayan ruins. Pretty reminiscent of that. This kind of makes me think of Olmec from Legends of the Hidden Temple. I'm not sure what civilization that's from, but there's so many different rich cultures from those eras, all in kind of similar areas. I think Mesoamerican culture in general is really fascinating to me. And getting to see those ruins is really great. So if you ever get a chance, check out uh, places like that in Mexico or maybe Central America, Belize. There's quite a few of those ruins that are still really well intact and super well preserved. So go check it out and see what you think. All right, let's go ahead and get started. But wait, Kara has been tailing us the entire time. Who would have guessed? And that, of course, makes Lily very peeved. Lily and Kara, button heads, two queens just going at it. So Lola tipped Kara off about where we were going and she does not want to get left behind. She would feel bad just gorging herself while Will is in the dungeon putting in some hard work. So, she and Lily are just going to camp out for a little bit. Now, this is a weird cryptic piece of information in the game that's actually a mechanic, sort of, of this upcoming dungeon. You're going to be putting statues on tops of these giant stone heads. And this is supposed to be like a hint, I guess, but it's not a great one. It makes sense, sort of. You'll see. Okay. Now we can go ahead and start the dungeon unabated by these whiners. Okay. So we're at a part of the Lorai Cliff where there is no wind. However, as we move forward, we'll be able to experience that. We're going to be putting the statues on those stone heads, just to give you a heads up. Okay. So for the dungeon proper, this is what I would call the first real dungeon of the game. And unfortunately, like many of the other dungeons that we're going to encounter throughout this playthrough, um, it's not very puzzle heavy. This game doesn't really do that. It's more action oriented. This is the Oracle of Seasons to your Oracle of Ages that you might find in the sequel to this game, which it's more of a spiritual successor than anything. Maybe we'll play that someday. I've actually never played that one, so it would be a... Uh, Bit of a trial and error. But anyway, back to Illusion of Gaia specifically. Um, yeah, this dungeon is very samey, as a lot of the dungeons in this game are. We're using a lot of similar enemies and assets. Now you have to remember, this was, you know, 90s era Super Nintendo. And on top of that, this was Quintet, who was a smaller studio at the time. You know, we're not talking like Enix or uh, Square. So, you know, 
for what it's worth, I'm not going to harp on this game for being save me. I know that it can be kind of boring to watch, also because we don't really have a lot of powers. I feel bad because in, you know, in a past life, on a different Let's Play channel, um, I would go back sometimes and like watch my content. And for like a fighting game or, you know, like a uh, an action RPG, like a Dragon Ball Z type of game, I would just go back and I'm thinking to myself, like, I never used any of the powers. I would just punch, 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 kick, 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 laser beam. That's about it. But, um, you know, that's partially because I didn't really understand that the value of a Let's Play isn't just playing the game. It's showing it off as well, you know going beyond just the means of physically recording content and putting it up on the internet. Uh, obviously, the commentary is a big part of a Let's Play, otherwise you're just doing a, uh, a video walkthrough, I guess. But in my old age, in my elderly wisdom, though, um, I've learned that it's kind of more fun to experiment and maybe try to play the game a different way. Now that's a little tough to do because I don't really have a ton of muscle memory with this game. I've never actually beaten it, so we'll see. But anyway, as you can see, Will's hair starting to blow a little bit. Getting closer to that wind. We're going to break that wind. But first, treasure. The diamond shaped block. Go us. Okay. Now. Said diamond shaped block is going to fit in a diamond shaped hole. Surprise! Kind of reminds me of playing Oracle of Seasons, another reference to that game already in today's episode, where uh, you would collect the various pieces and then it would, it would unlock the final area of the game. That's not what we're going to be dealing with today, obviously, but as far as I know, that's the only version of that. I don't think that there's anything else. Like that's that's the only reference that they make to such a crazy puzzle. I don't know. But anyway, going back to the enemies that we've encountered so far. So we've got these peanut butter poo monsters. We've got the four face blow dart shooters and the um, green caterpies from before. So that's pretty much it. Now, I think that this is just a way back. Yeah, a lot of these ladders that the game builds for you over time are. Um, I think they're just meant to be like little shortcuts back to where you were. Also, I didn't know if I was supposed to go there. Uh, a lot of the time, I really don't know what I'm doing. Definitely trial and error emphasis on the error. I guess you could jump down there that way, or take this slow route if you don't want to break Will's ankles. There's 0% chance he did not shatter both of his legs jumping down there. No magical flute's going to stop that. Okay, so I'm going to pile of bones here. See what they're up to. Explorer who saw the ink and gold ship. Hmm. In the skeleton's hand is a charm. And the paper that comes with it says, Father, please come back. Oh. When you find the gold ship, buy a crook. Sabus. Well, unfortunately, Father did not make it. No crook for him. Okay, so we've got a stone pushing puzzle, but it appears that we cannot push these any further because we're on the wrong side. Fear not, viewers. Using your psycho dash. I don't know why it's called that. It doesn't really feel like we're dashing at all. What a cool power where you literally hold a button and you wait and then uh, you run into stuff. Oh man, don't you love that? Super cool. That's literally it. But your reward is a herb for all of you Brits out there. What color is the orb? It is my favorite. So that's all that we can do in this area. We're going to need to actually scale this ladder. I think we need this one. Uh, I honestly don't know where I'm going. I feel like this is the way that I went before. 
we'll figure it out eventually. A lot of this air, I like that. That's probably a spot that's gonna be important in the not too distant future, huh? Someone's got its mouth open like, ah. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of backtracking in this one, I think. And there's gonna be a lot of me misremembering where I'm trying to go. That's probably also going to happen. Is this a spot? Okay, here we go. This is new. Usually these little, um, four corner boys will line up and they'll shoot cardinal directions or the uh, intermediate directions. If you know what I'm saying. I believe that's what those are called. I could be wrong. It's been a hot minute since I took social studies, but it was one of my favorite subjects as a little kid. I feel like it's something that a lot of people don't um, take seriously. And, you know, I'm not going to say the history repeats itself, because that's obviously not true. But being able to pay attention to trends and things that occur in our world, it's important. If you don't think that that's important, well, you can get out. Okay. So we're gonna continue on. Oh, okay. Kind of makes me think of those little like Capri Sun goo monsters from uh, when I was a kid. I guess they weren't monsters, they were children that upon drinking copious amounts of high fructose corn syrup could somehow turn into a puddle of silver goo. And we also have to fight these swirly girly heads. Use our flute to grab the orb. I remember when I would play this game and I would accidentally have some of the gems get clipped into the walls of the ceiling and man, I would panic. I'd be like, no, what am I gonna do? You can just twirl your flute and they'll come to you. It's kind of how a lot of things in life work. Go in public, start twirling your flute and things are gonna definitely come to you. You might wind up on a list, who knows? So unfortunately, there is one of those crazy swirly head monsters that we can't actually reach. Will's flute can only go so far, viewers. All right, another pile of bones. If I can move that gold statue, I can pass. That's a little bit of a hint, sort of. I mean, I, I mean, I, uh, I guess it's a hint. I mean, if you just, you know, Spend five seconds exploring this area, you'd figure it out. It's a little bit of a, an upcoming gimmick. It's referring to this. So we've got four gold statues. We've got four gold place markers. Oops, I already ruined it. Well, so much for me paying attention. You can kill those guys, and eventually we will be fighting them en masse. However, that is not what we're trying to do here. So you're going to want to stay just kind of out of range and then using your n -n 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 powers, slowly drag them onto the platforms. Okay. So obviously we're going to need to put them back where they belong. I don't know if you only have to do this with three of them. I mean, I guess I can find out right here, but, um, yeah, just don't get too close. Don't engage them. Don't touch them. Looks like I'm at the zoo. Yeah, and I guess you only technically have to do that with three. So there you go. Um, I think that door stays open permanently. If I'm not mistaken. And I think that this ladder leads you back up to where we were. I think. Yeah. Okay. So far, so good. Yeah, this dungeon... I'd say it's like 90% linear. A little bit of backtracking you'll have to do from time to time. But the door is permanently opened. Nice and wide. And we have another pile of bones, an Incan gold ship explorer. He lost his life in a trap. Excuse you. We might be having to step on these tiles. Can't always avoid them, can we? Does not appear to be that way. Now what's annoying is um, these little four corner shooters, they have the ability to have their little spear things clip to the wall, which is 
unfair to say the least garbage so you just got to move out of the way sometimes their shots don't actually hurt you i don't exactly know what the hitbox is for this sprite but whatever anyway if you're running low on health gonna record that's saving obviously continue the journey if you hit no then uh you'll get locked into the game just essentially putting you into like a sleep mode where you'll just keep talking over and over again it's kind of annoying so don't do that anyway now we are freedom going into the dark space though i believe this is required um it does remove the tiles, so we can't go back that way. I don't believe. We can't hit the gold place mats from over here, unfortunately. We get a defense up. Oh, wait, did that give us... That might have given us the path back. I spoke too soon. Okay. So now we're on top of the statue. The wind in the valley plays a melody, it seems to be the statue singing. We're going to learn a... This is, this is just a small gimmick. Okay. So there you go. That's the melody of the wind. It's required to progress. Somehow. I don't know why I said it like that. Somehow. But yes. So you gotta learn that, I guess. I think it actually comes up in your items. Yeah, it's the green music note. So now we have two melodies. This is not Earthbound. We will not be listening to eight of them. Oh, good joke. Nice. Okay. So... There was that weird head monster. I don't remember where it is. But that's where we're headed. Uh, I don't think it was this one. Was it? No. Actually, I don't know how you handle this, though. Can Frieden destroy these? No. And unfortunately, we don't have... Um, Frieden will get a cool special power eventually. He gets something neat eventually. I said eventually twice. I was gonna... I had another thing that I wanted to say, and then I completely forgot what it was midway through that sentence. Okay, so if I can find the area we just were, no, that's not it. We, um, there was that one head monster that was just out of reach. We need to go find it. Is this where we just were? Nope, there it is, okay. So this is the correct way forward. This is a really stupid, in my opinion, I mean, everything is my opinion in this Let's Play. You're my captive audience. Um, a really stupid way to, to kind of gatekeep progression, but whatever. Okay. So we got more Capri Sun monsters. I think one of the funniest things, I don't know if it's like a Mad TV college humor or a, um, excuse you, or a uh, Saturday Night Live sketch. But there's a really funny, um, they're making fun of the Capri Sun, kind of like those 90s commercials of like super fisheye lens zoomed in. Oh man, super cool. Like kids doing extreme sports and whatever. Like, yeah, you got fuel up using this sugary garbage. Um, I don't remember if that's related to this or not, but it's something like that. And they had all the kids fused together in one blob. And then after they fuse together, they turn into this crazy monster and they're like, kill it with fire. Go look that up. If you can remember it, you'll get a good chuckle out of it. Okay. So now we actually do run into these um, spear monsters. There's two varieties. There is the kind that will toss their spear. Yeah. And then there's also one that it's doing the same animation, but I don't know if it has the same capability. This one's throwing spears fast. Um, so they can throw spears. They can also use their spear to light the ground on fire, which is kind of cool. Much easier to avoid, though. So I'm not really sure either of them are too tricky. 
I think you could probably avoid it. If you're good. Also, I'm going to leave that there because... I don't know how long that'll last. Oop, goes away. Um, that's just a health refill if you need it. I don't because I just got another one before it. But anyway, there you go. I think we need to like tiptoe around here a little bit with these water passages. Passages. Okay. And then down below, as you can see, I got more of the, um, of course I take a damage after I, take a damage, take damage after I pass on the health refill. I mean, I didn't technically pass on it. Being technically correct is the best kind of correct viewers, you know it. Okay, there you go. There's the fire animation. Both pretty easy to avoid. It's relatively kind of a slow enemy. There's another herb for you. I think we've got two now. Three, okay. So we're in good shape. I did use the one in Edward's prison because I am an absolute ding-dang-dong. Messed that up. That's okay. All right. So this looks like this is pretty well marked and cleared out. There are other dungeons in this game that are... I mean, they're all relatively linear, but there are some that have... Uh, I guess maybe what makes them tricky as like a puzzle element is that they're kind of similar looking That's the that's probably the conundrum. I'm gonna be dealing with not that I can't handle them. Also. This is gonna suck All right, hold on Your turn your turn your turn. Okay, Whew. We do have two lives though as you can see with the two hearts above the nice DP who doesn't like a good DP Probably the person receiving it um yeah, and then we've got a handful more so- oh wait, these soldiers don't come alive until you do this, and then you have to fight four of them at the same time, viewers. Isn't that awesome? So I would recommend um, just kind of moving yourselves right above their hitboxes, which is kind of like at their waist. For some reason, they don't decide to move down at all? I don't know. But I'm not worried about it. I'm feeling pretty good. Took them all out. Relatively simple. And, uh, yeah, we can continue to move on. I'm actually going to clear out these guys real quick. Okay. Finish up this little area with Caterpies and Peanut Butter Monsters. Okay. And then next time... Oops, just kidding. Hold on one second. Get this power up real quick so I don't forget about it. I think that opens up another ladder, too. Yeah, it does. Okay. And then, uh... Yeah, next time we'll continue on with the Incan Ruins, finish this up, and uh, progress the story. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Super Nintendo Sunday's Illusion of Gaia, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.